Hello folks, it's been a while since you've seen one of my videos. You've been watching a number of videos from my colleagues about various aspects of theory of the firm. But today we're going to pause and I'm going to take you through how to properly construct some of these diagrams. And a good way to begin that is the proper construction of a, of a perfectly competitive firm operating in a perfectly competitive market. Some assumptions we make about these firms and this market, if you recall, that uh, we have perfect knowledge, so all firms in operating in the market are aware of uh, what other firms are doing. Each of the firms produces identical goods. Uh, there are no barriers to entry or exit. And that uh, firms are so small that uh, their output cannot affect market price and market equilibrium. And I know all this sounds very unrealistic, but it, this gives us a good model by which we can compare and contrast the behavior of firms in, in the real world. Let's get started. We employ what's called a two-pane analysis to analyze perfectly competitive firms. Here is pane one. This is a market, very typical to the markets that we've been dealing with for the past few weeks. And next to it, we place a, a firm. Note the vertical and horizontal axis. Here, when I go to diagram this firm, the vertical axis is price cost, and the horizontal axis is quantity slash output. Firms are price takers. They've got to take the market price. And so what I do then is I, t I, I deliver or I, I take that market price over to, to our firm. Remember to set these two diagrams side by side. And now I'm going to draw a straight line to represent that firm's the price that the firm has to offer. Uh, it's also its demand curve. It can sell all it wants to at this uh, this particular price, but it can't go any higher, can't go any lower because it wouldn't be profit maximizing. This is also the firm's average revenue, and this is also the firm's marginal revenue. Why? It's because the amount of revenue that they got on the unit they sold before the one they just sold is exactly equal to uh, earlier units, and it was going to be exactly to equal to any future units that they sell. All of these things that are constant. So the firm is facing a perfectly elastic situation. You may want to go back and review that concept of elasticity. How much is the firm going to produce? Well, in order to determine that, we've got to throw in this Nike-shaped marginal cost curve. You may want to go back and review why this is a U-shape. It has to do with the law of diminishing marginal returns. Once I've done that, I can identify the profit maximizing rate of output at marginal cost equal to marginal revenue, and this occurs at Q1. Go ahead and throw in an average total cost curve. Likewise, that's U-shaped for the same reason the marginal cost curve is. I also want you to be aware of the fact that the marginal cost curve intersects the average total cost curve at its particular lowest point where my marker is pointing at the moment. Uh, I know visually that this particular firm is showing a profit. Well, how do I know that? I look at this profit maximizing rate of output at Q1. Move up that rate of output intersects the average total cost curve first at this particular point, which I have noted. So it is this particular point here, this particular cost, that my average total cost is being met. This is also the line where the firm would be earning actually just a normal profit, where it is meeting all of its costs, including its entrepreneurial costs. This firm is selling above that selling at this particular point, so I know that this is going to be a profitable firm. This firm will be earning a super normal or an economic profit, which I have just shaded in. Uh, this is above the rate of normal profit, so the firm is, is bringing in more than uh, its fair share of costs. It's earning above that. So super normal is a vocabulary word uh, type of terminology that we use in the, a or the IB. Economic is the terminology of the use for the AP. You guys in this particular class can use can use either. So this firm is earning a super normal profit. Other firms in the market are going to be aware of that. So they're going to come in. How many will come in? Well, we take this normal profit line, retransfer it back to the market. We note that, that it uh, intersects our demand curve at this particular point. That's how many new firms are going to be entering into this market. So our supply curve shift from S to S2 at this particular point. What's going to happen, we've got the, then the establishment of a new market price, much lower than the original market price, and that means that this firm then is going to be facing a new market price, a new demand, a new average revenue, a new marginal revenue curve, and that means it's going to decrease its profit maximizing rate of output at MC equals MR2 from Q1 to Q2. So what we end up with then is the perfectly competitive firm in long-run equilibrium at operating very close to its minimum ATC. Hope that made sense. See you soon.